Okay, so we just got back from court this morning and I will put all the details about what happened at the end of this video. It's very interesting. This video is about Monster Max 2. So for those of you who aren't aware, I had this truck since I was 16 years old. It was my daily driver. I drove to work with it throughout my YouTube career. Every time something broke, we built it back bigger, better, and stronger. So this is what we've ended up with. It's one of one, the only one in the world. And that's because it's actually built to be perfectly functional when it's done. All the components are properly sized, very heavily built to work all together. This truck has been a long time in the development and we're taking everything into thorough consideration thinking our way through it so that we have a functional truck in the end so as much as it looks like this is taking a while that's because it does we have to make everything from scratch the biggest thing we're still looking for is an electrical engineer capable of tying two six-speed allison transmissions together with one tcm the engines are ready the drivetrain just has to shift at the same time so we need two transmissions that shift at once contact us at dieselmediacorp.com if you're extremely experienced in transmissions and electrical engineering we cannot have amateurs here so if you don't know what you're doing please don't contact us it's not as easy as it sounds we're here with dan from dan's diesel performance and today we're in chicago monster max has been tucked away here for a little while about a year to be exact there's been a lot of work getting done so everyone's like you built this truck and you're not going to do anything with it why is it just sitting there not doing anything that is not the case at all it's actually been here getting a fucking second engine installed. So he pulled apart literally everything on this truck that was related to the powertrain and redid all of it. This came here with two engines that were barely running. So we tested this out when it was first done. Everyone's like, it's this doggy old Duramax. It's not even gonna drive over like a log. This is what I drove to work every day. When I had literally nothing, this was the only vehicle I had. I had hand tools and I was working on this out in the snow, in the rain outside because it wouldn't fit in my garage and I needed lighting. So it was like shade tree mechanic setup for a long time and I messed up a lot of crap on this thing that he had to redo. So tell everyone what, what I screwed up on this. Well, the first setup, we set you up with a 68 level drop in turbocharger and all the piping. Looking in the videos, it seemed like the truck was always doggy. It was like you put it to the floor and it was just like... Oh. He had some massive exhaust leaks on the backside of the turbocharger. The mass airflow sensor was damaged, so the ECM didn't know how much air was going into it. And then there was it was rolling coal through the AC vents. On the front engine, we did our 64 millimeter stage 2 turbocharger, 60% over injectors, 10 mil CP3 pump. Also fabbed up hood stack pipe that comes off the back of the turbo and routes like a twin turbo pipe would. Pat at 7.5 Customs did all the powder coating. I'm insulted that they redid my... What? Show them that. I need friction on the C-clamp. Uh, and then I wrap this myself too. It's peeling off. <laughs> it looks like crap. It looks like So we got two transmissions in here that are both built by us. And the issue that we're running into is getting both transmissions to shift at the exact same time, lock up the converter at the exact same time with one TCM. Unfortunately, with the factory TCM, it just doesn't allow that to happen. But you got them to rev at the same time. So yep. we start both engines and you push the throttle down and both engines rev at the exact same time. Yep. So you're probably wondering how we get two engines to drive this. They're both tied together. It would be as if your truck has a normal drivetrain with another engine added on. Each engine has a drive shaft going this towards the center and then they go into a large drop box with a chain going down. They spin that box and then the output spins the axles. So since the one motor is facing the opposite way, it's it's reversed. The truck that I destroyed of my grandpa's, I think it was destroying my grandpa's truck and not buying him a new one. I hope they had insurance. That's what this motor was from. It was an absolute mess. So the, the motor looked like crap too. And then Swanky Steel got us hooked up with a set of stacks for it. I see that, those look amazing. I mean, this is way better than the work I would have done myself. What power is this pushing? Should be about 650 horsepower. Chrome plated fuel rails, guys. Look at this. Holy smokes. He's acting like anybody's ever going to see the top of this thing. It's supposed to be kind of waterproof, right? Yeah, I mean, water can get on and it'll still run just fine, I think. So like, like underwater is good? Well, underwater, but oh. get splashed in rain and stuff like that. Well, like, let's say it's, <laughs> like, it's got like waves, <laughs> waves crashing over it and it's like 20 feet underwater. Is it going to be fine? Yeah. One thing I'm seeing right now is that this roll cage is probably not strong enough to handle a rollover. All right, anyways, how do you start this thing? Push the button. Whoa, it cranked like way less than it used to. Uh, oh, there's a big red switch. Ah, oh, yes! Yes, that is sick. Ah. Here, shut the door. It's actually pretty quiet. Dude, that is like the weirdest feeling. 
there's an engine in, in front of us and behind us. And then when we get three engines, we'll put the third one here. They're within like five RPM of each other. Yeah. All right, how do we shut it off? Just like a regular truck. Okay, and then we'll probably rip this out and put like a carbon fiber roof panel in or something. It'll help it weigh less. Weight is a big concern here because this truck weighs so much. So anything that we can eliminate by like carbon fiber body parts, like a carbon hood, takes off another two or three pounds. You really want to pay attention to that. They had these milled out of solid steel. You know, when you're drag racing something like this, from here up is solid. Weight is a big issue. We're at like 26,000 pounds and just, just axles. So if you need literally anything done diesel wise for your truck, take it here. Yeah, they specialize in, in anything diesel. So if you want to make your truck push like 2000 horsepower, they can do that. Thank you, sir. for sir you know it's funny i got a beer i got a nice bluetooth seth is like really struggling out there actually um anyways i have bluetooth climate control it's a little hot out right now so i'm gonna bump that temp down 64 degrees so it's like 90 out seth is really struggling actually to get that set up oh, it's a little loud out there So with the help of two excavators, seven people, one skid loader, some rigging equipment that we rigged up at the last minute, she's finally back. It's been two and a half years since this was being used by us. It's been sitting in the shop for two and a half years. So I have this custom door specifically ordered to fit this truck that took six months to come in. Let's pull it inside. Is that a spider? Grab my shotgun. listen up because it's about to get wild we have this massive list for this massive truck that needs a massive load of work done to it the truck is movable that's all we've done so far but it has not done anything everyone's like when's it gonna run and drive today but right after we talk about this brake system that can function without the engines running we have a lot of steep hills here show them the hill the problem is that most vehicles, if the brakes fail while you're on a hill like that, you can kind of maneuver it, you know, turn the wheel, oh, we're fine, we're just not dying right now. We need to figure out a way to make the brakes work without the engines running in case we, let's say we run out of fuel and we're in the middle of climbing Mount Everest, we can't have this not working. Then we need to figure out how to make the brakes operate without the truck running. Let's say both motors died, which the rear one's not powering the brakes. So we need to find out a way that we can have a lever or something that locks all four up. We can't have a small child running out in front of us. I don't want to run over more than 20 small children. Like, that'd be terrible. 19's over. Electrical. We need an expert capable of connecting two Allison transmissions to work in unison. This is TCM. This TCM needs to handle both transmissions. That was a dumb diagram. They could have imagined that. Aesthetic aluminum switch panel that replaces the center console. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 switches there. We need to redo all that to make this as nice as possible so that someone could come in here and be like, okay, we're flipping engine one, two, three, four, after burner eight, nine. We're gonna rip this out and we're gonna put a huge switch panel in here. Suspension, we have no suspension as you guys can tell. All that weight 
is on here. So the problem is that since this is rigid, the axle and everything, the truck makes like a rectangle. The frame, what happens if like one corner drops off into a ditch? The whole corner is gonna, it's gonna three wheel. Hauling is a huge issue. It took us one skid loader, two excavators, six people, 25 tools, a sledgehammer. Oh, two wreckers just to load and unload the truck. The wreckers every time is costing around $2,000 once you're good at it. The first time it took us like 5,000 because it took forever to figure it out. And they charge by the hour, which is $600 per hour per truck. So we ended up around $5,000. Tall roller tires. The truck straddles the low boy trailers. The low boy can literally go under it. That's why when we lift the truck up and the low boy pulls under, it fits. Jacks, we have no way of lifting the truck. So once it's on the low boy to get those steel wheels off, the truck can't be raised. So we need bottle jacks, but tall bottle jacks. So they need to be like this, but then they need to fit under the truck. So we need telescoping tall bottle jacks. Right, I've never heard of that. Lift for working on this bit. There's no way to work on it. How are you, like we have to pull the skid loader in here and have a huge pallet. I have this balcony that we're working on. So I'm thinking we pull it right up to that and you can lean over and work on it like a truck. AC condenser, we need to put a snorkel on because last time, as we found out, no matter how high your truck is, you're gonna end up with water coming in. Uh, this is not good. We have no rear steering right now. We gotta hook that up to the rear engine. These lines get hooked up to these and it's literally ready to go, except for the fact that we need to put the belt on. Double shear tie rod connections. So we have this huge tie rod that goes here. There's two of them. But the problem is that this bolt has no support on top. Right, Tyler? So I'm thinking we That's put a correct. bracket here and then a longer bolt. Yes. So right now, this if you hit something hard enough, this could bend both of these bolts yep. back. Another weak link. Skid plate for the front steering pump. What happens when we're driving through a forest or a house and one of the trusses comes through the steering? It's open. Mm, it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. Skid yes. Another problem with this truck is that the headlights are 16 feet off the ground. We need some spotlighting and accent lighting for this bad boy. Tools needed for all aspects. Manuals, tools, catalogs. We gotta order a bunch of stuff for this bad boy. So Napa stopped by. 75 oil filters, pumps and crap, lighting, grease, a fire extinguisher. Why do we put that? <laughs> So this is our previous caliper. You can see right in here. This is our new caliper, five times as big. Mm. And this is our previous rotor. And this is our new rotor. Holy cow. So a bonus to this system is we're looking for something that's safe. So when you lose engine power, you can still stop. Lack of air pressure is what actuates the brakes. Even if we lost all of our air, we still have brakes. This is our new brake actuating valve for to a lot of people do fluid brakes, all of them do fluid brakes on their truck builds and everything. A big red flag about doing fluid brakes on this is that it can't stop, first of all, if you run out of power or whatever. The hydro boost up top cannot even power this kind of system. Like the lines coming through just the steering are 25 feet long. Just to push fluids through all this is stupid. And I haven't even heard of any fluid brakes or anything big in the first place. Nah. So they kind of phased that out in the 70s. Being that we have air brakes, one very cool thing about that is that we use one of these. Hold to apply parking brake. This is gonna go in our new switch panel. So when you stop the truck, it's gonna be like. <laughs> this is our new brake pedal. This is identical to the brake pedal that's in Frank, the semi. You guys know the difference between a semi brake pedal and a normal pickup truck brake pedal. Basically, all the, the pressure is gonna be on the floor here instead of into the firewall and up. So the one thing we did do, we just built this. So before it was just two bars here. We put a big X here and these supports so that it can't fold forward, back or left, right. The bars were bending a little bit because the truck weighs so much. So this way we don't have to worry about the entire truck collapsing on itself. I think we're ready to go. Now. Yes! What? Ooh, something smells hot. Yeah. There's coolant dripping all over the ground. Is it just overflowing now? Yeah, that's not good. FBI, open up! We definitely need a rear engine. Yeah, so one this, engine. This engine's working way too hard right now. You stress it out. Yeah. Like, oh my god. <laughs> it's getting worse. Our support vehicle's on the way. Uh oh. Can't hit that. Oh my god, the power. Oh! 30,000. Ooh, that is hot. Woo! Woo! The fans weren't on? There's no fan under the front running right now. Oh. 
both of them. The fans went out. No wonder it was getting hot. We didn't you, have fans. They, yeah. they kicked out again. No fans. We blew the relays for the cooling fans, so that's why they weren't working. So I bought a couple more. So. Oh my gosh. Wow. You're right at the top. This is 40,000 pounds, that was right? no issue with one engine. That was no issue. I'm doing chin-ups on the tie rod. <laughs> Literally the tie rod. I'm doing chin-ups on the tie rod. The tie rod of my monster truck. Crawl like through the Grand Canyon. I want to be able to straddle it for the uh, uh, St. Louis arch. I want to be able to like put one wheel on the top with the other wheel down in the Empire State Building. I can drive completely over this. I think so. Oh my goodness. All right. No way, guys. Uh-oh, he's got to go forward. This is so weird, dude. You're going, going backward. so cool. <laughs> I've wanted to do this for so long, dude. It's like you hop out and your leg gets ran over. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. He wraps the whole power lines up in him. That's all the way to the floor. Yeah, they're smoking back here. Wait, yeah, the rear is getting burned up. You push down on the brakes and the front one is broke. You let off and the rear one's breaking. Watch this. Why, uh, why is there a chain on the back of my We are near Max? bottomless sinkhole 2.0. What's that noise? This sinkhole here, it's mostly just like a water hole. It's about 16 feet deep, but unfortunately our last truck was only 15 feet tall, so it didn't make it. We brought a 17 foot tall truck. There's a chain on the back just in case we need to pull 20 other trucks through it when we get to the other side. This test here, if it doesn't make it through this, if we're spinning two tires, we have to weld the diffs. Really need those shocks fixed. Oh, he's okay. Just those back two, front and back. Oh, oh. You gonna do it? No. I don't know. Go, 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 go! Oh. Orange Hilux didn't have enough. Pull me out and park first really slowly. I want to see how it moves it. And park? Yeah, I want to see what it does. That's why I bought it. I, that's just like an accessory. It comes with the truck. When you get stuck, I want to, I want to make sure my investment was solid. It's moving like it's nothing.
Whew, that smells bad. A couple things we gotta fix. Number one being this. What? Never mind, it just sounds like a T-Rex call or something. I don't know. I didn't drive this just to like have fun yet because it's not ready for that, but we did it to figure out what needed to be fixed. I'm gonna show you guys the process. We're not gonna hide anything. And if you wanna judge it for what it is, go ahead. But if you fail to account for the factors involved here that we have inadequate suspension because it hasn't been finished yet, I'm going to roast you. We only have two out of four tires spinning half the time, but we don't know if it's because we don't have lockers or if because we don't have or if because we don't have suspension. Probably a little bit of both, but mostly because we don't have suspension. So obviously the truck is going to move if the tires are touching the ground. That would help. These hold oil inside, oil and nitrogen, and they leak oil right now because the seals are on backwards. So we have new seals to just put in and then we're good. This right here, I'm really surprised we didn't break. That held a ton of force. That's coming out as soon as these are fixed. There's issue number one. Issue number two, uh, the rear engine's not working. Basically half the wheels are spinning right now and we have half the power. Engine one is actually performing really well. It, it's not getting overheated. After that, literally, dude, this truck would have ate. It would have- It would have climbed out of there. We don't have enough tires. Uh, there's only 80 inches of tread patch contact here. I really think we would have made it across if we had triples on. I know people are gonna go crazy online. They're gonna be like, Monster Max 2 couldn't even make it through that little eight foot deep water hole that nothing else can make it through. Well, this is why. Okay, so we just got back from the DeKalb County Courthouse in Smithfield, Tennessee for the third visit to court for the jet ski splashing incident. If you don't know what that is, you want to catch yourself up. There's other videos on it. But we went in there. The lawyers discussed it with the DA who is pushing through these charges of, of trying to charge us with a Class A misdemeanor. They came back out and told us that they still want to push it. So that means that our next court date is December 14th, and that's going to be a preliminary hearing. So basically... The judge is going to look at it and he's going to decide if there's probable cause to, to push us through. Now, I'm not too versed in law, so don't hold com me to completely to this. But if he, does, if he doesn't dismiss this, it's going to go to a jury. So the thing is that the DA who is trying to push this on us can surpass that and still push us to a grand jury. So chances are that the splashing incident is going to go to a jury of 12 people to decide whether or not we are convicted guilty of third degree splashing or you know whatever the circumstances are here so um it's really unfortunate that anyone in this world thinks that that is a good use of anyone's time considering how little of it we have um, but i'm willing to fight it because i know that it's wrong as much as it looks like we may be unsafe in videos that's not how we are in real life and i take people's lives very much into consideration so um yeah, that's where we are. So I guess eight months from the original incident, we're still going back to court for this. Um, I, I do think it's hilarious though, that we're gonna have to probably have a jury for this whole thing. Because when the government pushes things like this on people, it usually doesn't go this far. They back down within the first 10 minutes. They offer deals and deals and deals. They hope maybe he takes that. Maybe, maybe we're done. Maybe we don't have to waste any more time. Maybe it won't make me look more stupid in front of all the other people who elected me or, or who are supporting me in politics. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to stand down because I know that this is wrong and nothing should ever go this far that could have easily been resolved face to face. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great night.